This video is a record of three sessions at the same spot at Dungeness Point. On each occasion I've parked at the end of the Shingle Hall Road and I'm fishing what's referred to as the dustbin. Not having fished here for quite a number of years, I was only here really to see what it was like. I was at Dungeness to fish Galloways at high water, but I got here rather early. The tide is still on its way out, so I decided to give this a go. Although the first session's in June and there's very little wind, my setup still includes fixed grip leads. The current's very strong here and it used to be notorious for snags. I've only got lugworm with me and before I'm able to cast out my second rod I've already got a fish on the first one which is using a free hook clip down rig. And that's a dogfish straight away. This one tries to get me with its sandpaper like skin by swinging its tail round but this actually does me a favour since its tail goes near towards its head and it allows me to hold the fish better removing the hook. Holding it this way doesn't harm the fish and the unhooking process is very quick when it's lip hooked. As I'm casting out my second rig, which is a two hook long snood clip down version, you may notice there's quite a number of other anglers fishing here. I was hoping that was a good sign that there might be some bass around. Those to my left are right at the points. Anyone who fishes here knows that's in line with where the two lighthouses line up. As I'm waiting for the next bite, I'll run through the location in a bit more detail. The map first gives a regional setting in relation to the M20 and nearby venues, then homes in on Dungeness. Jury's Gap, Galloways and Denchmarsh are on the west side, which some refer to as West Beach or West Bay, while the lifeboat section and the boats are on the East Bay side. The boil is right in front of a power station, while a dustbin, or washing machine as other people call it, is right at the point. I've covered access to this area in the video pad of boats. I'm fishing the board side of a dustbin. Although the currents are still pretty strong, they're not quite so fierce at low tide, but I'm still fishing my Technos Dewey rods with the hollow tips. The splice tips would have bent round far too much. I'm using 30 pound braid here today since I haven't brought any spools with mono. Normally I'd prefer to use mono, especially if there's a southwesterly wind. It didn't take long for the next bite, this time on a two stud rig. And it's another dogfish. Although the shingle is pretty steep here, I still prefer to move up and down with the tide to be closer to the water's edge. Having said that, when the conditions are quite rough, you don't want to be too close when the tide's on the way in, because you can easily get caught out. So in that respect, it's fairly similar to chisel. However, today it's pretty calm, and I don't even need to use a bag of stones to weigh down the tripod. Since I'm only here to fish low water, this will be my first and only move down the beach. When the tide starts coming in, I'll move back up to roughly where I started and I'll fish until the water comes up to the tripod and at that point I'll pack up and go to Galloway's. Moving and arranging my gear is a well rehearsed routine and I leave my rods out for as long as possible just in case something might take the bait when I'm in the process of moving.
nothing on this time so I rebait the hooks clip down the rig get the rod ready for recasting then go back up to get the other rod and tripod By using stop knots rather than crimps on this two snud rig I am allowing the bottom snud to drop down in a one up one down fashion but since I'm using a cascade swivel I can still clip it down for distance casting. The hooks I'm using are 1.0 Aberdeens for fishing with worm. These rigs work well for decent sized fish and I have got a tutorial how to build them in one of my Seaford videos. If you're interested in that a link to it is in the top right hand corner and in the description below. The short snud rig with three size 2 Aberdeens hasn't brought in anything other than dogfish so I'm swapping it over to another one of those two long snud rigs which I'd already baited up and had hanging from a tripod. I've already put on a finger stall so I can cast out further distance. Because of the strong currents distance fishing isn't normally needed here at a point but since I've only been catching dogfish I'm going to try it a little bit further. I'll also have a few casts really close in just behind the second breaker just in case bass are patrolling that area. I would have preferred it if the water was a bit clearer but this part of Dungeness always seems to be coloured. The current is now running from left to right so I'm taking that into account from where I'm casting from. As I sit down, a large black shape pops up in front of me and moves to my left. With the abundance of fish here, seals are quite a common sight. The angles to my right are closer to the boards, but others are still arriving and filling in the gaps. It can get pretty busy here, and it's a very good venue to come to if you've gone a long time without catching anything. There's plenty of dogfish here in the summer and plenty of whiting in the winter. However, since not many people just want to see dogfish being caught in the summer, I haven't filmed a lot of this session. The tide is back on its way in and I've moved back up the beach and started to pack away. There's been plenty of action and I've probably stayed longer than I should have. I had a little bit of ragburn with me which I was only going to use at Galloway's but I did try it here but again that only got me dogfish. So I've stayed for this one last bite.
Once again, it's another dogfish, and it brings my total to this short session to 16, which included a couple of double shots, although it's a bit disappointing that I didn't catch any other species. However, it was still a busy session, and those dogfish certainly put a bend in the rod, which is far more than what I experienced in the afternoon at Galloway's. I decided to leave the point alone until late in the autumn and in the winter, which is when I used to fish this venue anyway. So I was back in November, conditions were very different and the beach was pretty empty. There were a couple of fishing by the boats and a couple by the boards, but no one anywhere near me. This time I'm fishing the ebb in a strong southwesterly and I'm using my Kalmyk 07 rods. I set one of them up with a splice tip and a loop rig and the other one with a hollow tip and a pulley rig. Go back 15 years and the beach would have been packed as conditions looked ideal for cuddling. The rigs and bait I was using had these in mind but deep down it was pretty unlikely I was going to catch any. If there were any about there would be many more anglers on the beach. But we live in hope and there's still a chance for bass as long as it's not just all whiting then this could still be a successful session. The pulley rig with squid is attached direct to 25 pound mono. Under these conditions the current is pretty strong and you've got to feed out a fair amount of line in order for your sinker to hold bottom. It's essential to weigh down your tripod in order for it not to be pulled over. My loop rig is attached direct to 50 pound braid. I was a bit uncertain about whether to use braid or not but I thought I'd give it a go to begin with. As expected the toe is very strong from right to left so I'm having to walk quite a distance to my right before casting out. Since there's no stretch in the braid, I'm expecting to see most of my bites, however I'm not sure whether the lead's going to hold bottom or not. Bites on both rods straight away, a couple of whiting on the loop rig, and now I've got a bite on the squid. A fair amount of resistance, so this looks quite promising. Unfortunately, it's the first of seven dogfish and a fair amount of weed. A squid is penalled and luckily this fish is hooked on the top hook so it's fairly straightforward to remove it. Having returned the fish and cast the rod back out again it's time to change the reel on my other rod over to using mono. 
I'll just cut the rig and swivel from the braid and reattach it to the mono once I've reassembled my rod. I'm pretty keen on these Penafinity 7000s, so I've got several of these reels. But once I start threading the line through the rod rings, I decided to change the tip over. In today's conditions, the splice tip is bouncing about too much, so I'm changing it over to the hollow tip. Apologies for the wind noise, but it was pretty blustery at this stage. Things went quiet for a bit, but then the wind died down, and halfway down the tide, it was a fisher chuck. This is the rod with a loop brick in action now. A whiting and dogfish double shot. Lots of whiting followed on this rig, but I didn't film much of that. I had a spell that was so hectic that I could only use one rod at a time. This bite was a big knock on the pulley rig. At last, something different. A jumbo pouting of well over a pound. The bottom snood of my loop rig is penalled, and this was a common occurrence. Free whiting at the same time. Just like my session in June, I didn't feel much of this one, so I'm finishing on this dogfish. I ended up with 28 whiting, 3 pouting and 7 dogfish. Back again just before Christmas, and once again I've got the beach to myself. This is not a particularly good sign. It's not as windy as before, 
and there's a bit of rain in the air. I've got a range of baits this time. I've pretty much ruled out codling and bass and I'm hoping there could be a few dabs about. I've brought squid but I've also got sticky black lug. I've cut up some sprats for tipping and I've got some fresh out dungy blacks from Richardson's. I've also brought lugworm from South End that I dug the day before. I'm expecting to use heavy leads either with fixed wires or breakaways. This time I've decided to use my 16 foot Grand Wave Darwith rods. I've sent one out with a short wire boom rig to see if there are any dabs about and I'm setting up the other one with a loop rig. I spot a bite straight away so I have to wait to set up the second rod. And pretty much as expected, it's a pin whiting and not a dab. This time I've decided to fish the tide on the flood and over high water and since I'm filming more of a session I'm hoping it's not going to be whiting all the way. Back to setting up a second rod. These grand waves bend a lot more from my karmic rods into the tide and the reason I'm using them is that they're a little bit longer. I was expecting the waves to be a lot higher but it's not as windy as I thought it would be. Once again I'm using 25 pound mono straight through. see this is going to be another busy session. More action on a boom rig before I can get my second rig ready. The first of a number of triple shots. This one's got a whiting on a bottom hook and pouting on the other two. look at the rigs. A small squid tips off a bottom snud on the loop rig which is penalled. The boom rig has size 4 hooks with a lugworm occasionally tipped off with a bit of sprat. Having got both rigs out, I've got to be a bit careful to make sure the lines aren't crossing. I 
I suppose this is where brightly coloured real line would help, but I'm not really a fan of that. I've liked these rods ever since I bought them years ago and the hollow tips sit nicely in the tide. Unfortunately, like my Gravels, I don't think they're available anymore. For those who don't think fishing is an exercise, they should try fishing here. You don't have to wait very long for a bite, it's all action. This certainly gives your arms and back a good workout. Whiting on the top snood and dogfish on the bottom. The dogfish seem to be here now throughout the year and using squid you're bound to catch them. If you're interested in making these loop rigs, I've got a link to a tutorial in the top right hand corner and in the description below this video. Occasionally your reefs get caught up here, but it's on weed. The snags that were here years ago just aren't there anymore. That's the reason why this area was referred to as a dustbin. Getting snagged on lost gear used to be the norm. I'm guessing that successive large storms have either shifted this or has buried it under tons of shingle. Anyway, the good thing is I didn't lose any rigs in either of these three sessions in this video.
Having returned those whiting, it's time to start moving my gear up the beach. Unfortunately, the move coincides with it starting to rain. I've left this rig out a little bit too long and the fish have wrapped themselves round the snuds. Another double shot of a whiting and a dogfish. Still no dabs, just waiting on a boom rig. Since I'm fishing the tide all the way up, three moves would be needed today.
This would be my last move of the day. Although it looks like it's clearing up in the distance, that's pretty deceptive, and the fog is coming down. In this shot, you can see the power station and the two lighthouses. The old one's in the distance, and the new one in the foreground, and as you can see they don't line up, so I'm slightly to the right of the point. I'm now at the strand line, so don't expect the tide to come up any further than where I am. Yet another triple shot, without any dabs, but to be honest I half expected that. In the past I have had my personal best dab from this spot, but most of the time I go to the boards to catch dabs, and I used to do better fishing for them in January. Still, I shouldn't complain, since this beats being at home, and with Christmas being cancelled this year, I couldn't find a better way of spending my time. One last dogfish, and that's it for 2020. I finished off with 44 whiting, 5 pouting, and 4 dogfish. Another very busy session.